a giant, a living fossil, the saltwater crocodile. Perhaps the most successful predator the world has ever seen. It has survived, unchanged in 100 million years. One of nature's master designs. The most powerful bite since T-Rex. The most complex heart in the animal kingdom. And a brain with unexpected intelligence. Now, science uncovers the secrets of this ultimate predator. They shared the earth with the earliest dinosaurs. A reptile that has undergone an amazing evolutionary journey. Its body unlike any other. A body built to stand the test of time. A creature that survived the extinction events that wiped the dinosaurs off the face of the earth. Could this animal have the traits to even out-survive humanity? Today, there are 23 known species of crocodilian still on the planet. In the wetlands of the southern United States, the legendary American alligator. In the rivers and lakes of Africa, the fearsome Nile crocodile. But the unchallenged king of them all is found in Southeast Asia and Northern Australia, the giant saltwater crocodile, the salty. It can grow over 20 feet long and weigh well over a ton. Key to the saltwater croc's survival, for millions of years, it has been the biggest and perhaps the most dangerous reptile on the planet. Few creatures are safe from this ancient predator, even man. October 11, 2004. Diane and Andrew Kerr are camping by a beach in far north Queensland, Australia. With them are their friends, Alicia Sorahan, her husband Bill, and their son Jason. They've been camped here for the last 12 days. In the dead of night, a huge shape lifts itself from the water. A 14-foot saltwater crocodile. Andrew Kerr hears a noise outside his tent. The croc lunges and seizes him by the legs. About four o'clock in the morning, pitch black outside, and we heard the screaming, and I've never heard screams like it. It was unbelievable. Bill and Alicia run out of their tent. The crocodile is dragging Andrew towards the water. His wife, Diane, is trying to hold him back. Bill rushes for an ax. Alicia reacts out of pure instinct. When I come round, I just sort of saw it had Andrew. I just sort of just jumped straight on the back of his head. I thought, well, I've got to try and pull it off Andrew. The crocodile releases Andrew and turns on Alicia. One bite and her arm is instantly shattered. Rescue finally comes from the barrel of her son Jason's gun. For Alicia and Andrew, it was an incredible escape. That's a 3,000 pound closing pressure on the, uh, on the jaws is unbelievable. You know, she's lucky to have the arm. The crocodile watched, learned, and chose the ideal moment to strike. But was this most ancient of creatures really guided by its intelligence? Could its brain be a reason for its 100 million year endurance as a species? Science is searching for answers to what makes the croc the ultimate survivor. 
the coastal waters of Australia's Northern Territory. 35 years ago, crocodiles here were hunted to the verge of extinction. But in 1971, the Australian government declared salties a protected species. It's been a conservation success story. Now, their numbers are booming. There are an estimated 70,000 salties living in these waterways. And they're moving back into territory where people live. Veteran ranger Tommy Nichols and his crew are on Salty Watch. With them is croc scientist Dr. Adam Britton. They're patrolling Darwin Harbor, near the Northern Territory's main city. To keep humans safe, any crocs who swim close to the city are trapped and killed. And it looks like the gates down there may be a croc in it. The trap's been sprung. Now the hard part, getting the croc out and onto the boat. Tommy's been doing this for 15 years. He knows how quickly things can go wrong. Five years ago, Tommy misread a captured Salty. He lost two fingers and part of his hand in a split second. Bit me on the hand and twisted, and that's what all the damage was done. I lost those two fingers and a bit of my hand. Preventing crocodile-human conflict is a vital part of protecting the species as a whole. Yes, well done, fellas. Yeah. The salty is euthanized humanely and brought to this government lab. Very, very light color. Dr. Adam Britton's using this opportunity to perform a necropsy, a post-mortem specimen dissection. His students are Tommy and his rangers. The search for answers to the crocodile's 100 million year survival story is about to go under the skin. What crocodiles have been able to do over their evolution is they've been able to fine tune and perfect elements of their physiology to make them better hunters. It's only when you start looking at all of the components at once that you realize just how finely engineered these animals are. Adam begins with what was always thought to be the croc's weakest link, its brain, a primitive stimulus and response organ set inside a two-inch thick casing of bone. But evidence is now emerging that crocs are far more intelligent than we ever thought possible. Unlike most other reptiles, crocodiles have a cerebral cortex an evolutionary addition to the brain which controls higher learning. In Africa, crocodiles have learned the migration habits of zebra and wildebeest. In Australia, salties have learned to anticipate the mass migration of fish. Crocodiles have got a very good capacity to learn. This is very useful for crocs because it means they can exploit predictable patterns in their prey. They can even learn things like timings. Any clues that they get that an event's going to happen, they can learn that. The Salty's ability to observe and learn the behavior patterns of its prey could provide an answer to the attack on Andrew Kerr and Alicia Sorahan. The campers had been at the site for 12 days. 12 days following predictable behavior patterns. The salty may have learned the times the campers were most active, the times they were most vulnerable, and most importantly, where they slept. The cerebral cortex, which controls the ability to learn and adapt, is one reason for the crocodile's incredible survival but so is its ability to hide and ambush its prey. Carefully, you can actually see the eardrum 
The salty skull is shaped in such a way that only its eyes, ears, and nostrils break the surface of the water. A crocodile can float like this for hours with only a fraction of its body showing. Achieving this was one of its evolutionary trump cards. Prey have no idea that beneath these few square inches breaking the surface is 16 feet, over a thousand pounds of maximum predator, until it's way too late. But crocodiles have much more than just camouflage in their ambush armory. Dotted around their jaws are minute but finely tuned pressure sensors. Salties can use this sixth sense to detect prey from afar. Anything disturbing or moving through the water sends out pressure waves that are picked up by the salty sensors, guiding it in to attack. Once prey is in its jaws, the salty unleashes its most terrifying predatory technique, unmatched in the animal kingdom. Crocodilians are maximum predators. And this is their primary lethal weapon, the death roll a deadly spin that doesn't just drown live prey, it also tears it into bite-sized pieces. The rotational power of a death roll can dismember even the largest prey. Adam's dissection moves to the salty's tail revealing the source of its power. You can actually see quite clearly. Three pairs this. of muscles that work in concert to provide this, this thousand pound machine's four. massive thrust. Uh, like pistons in a car engine, one pulling while the other is pushing. These three pairs of muscles provide not only rotational force, but also explosive propulsion. A salty's tail can propel it at speeds of nearly 12 miles an hour. It may not sound all that fast, but a thousand pound croc moving at that speed means it hits its prey with a momentum of 12,000 pounds. It seems like the perfect predator, but does the crocodile have a flaw? a flaw that makes its 100 million year survival seem even more amazing. Marine hunters like the great white, the killer whale, and the barracuda are smooth skinned and sleek shaped, ideal for gliding through the water with minimal disturbance. But a crocodile's skin is rough and pitted it seems that a surface like this would transmit pressure waves as it moves through the water, warning any prey of its approach long before it's close enough to attack. Dr. Mason Mears from the University of Tampa is studying the amount of time it takes for crocodilians to strike their prey. His research and high-speed film footage reveals the average strike takes three-tenths of a second that's slower than the reaction time of most fish. Yet, crocodilians are very successful ambush predators. Dr. Mears believes something must blind fish to an impending attack. He's found a possible answer in the similarity between the croc's rough skin and the surface of a golf ball. I came up with the idea that maybe they're acting like golf balls. The dimples on a golf ball in flight grip the air to the surface, reducing drag. Studies show that perfectly smooth golf balls only travel half as far as dimpled balls. Could crocodilians, crocs and alligators be using their rough, pitted skin in a similar way to reduce drag? Using a frozen alligator head 
Dr. Mears carefully maps the skin surface, creating a virtual 3D model. From this model, he creates an exact replica of the alligator head to be used in a high-tech test. The water in this flotation tank is clouded with millions of tiny glass beads. When hit with a laser, these beads allow a high-speed camera to record the drag of the head moving through water. If it's doing what we think it is, it's reducing the pressure ahead of the snout as it moves through the water, and as a result, is less detectable to fish uh, or potential prey. As the head passes through the plane of the laser, its movements are captured and then analyzed by a computer that outputs a visual map of the turbulence. The initial data seems to support Dr. Mears' theory that the crocodilian's pitted skin creates a cloak of low-pressure water, reducing its drag and giving prey little warning of its approach. In the water, crocodiles are fast, powerful, and stealthy. Yet on land, they have a reputation of being clumsy, slow moving, rarely venturing far from water. Nothing could be further from the truth. The 23 species of crocodilian can travel over land using the belly crawl, the walk, the high walk, and the gallop. Many crocs are capable of explosive charges that can carry them nearly as fast as a running human. Being able to walk on land has been key to the crocodile's 100 million year survival. One hundred ten million years ago, the Earth was home to a variety of monstrous crocodilians, massive aquatic predators. This eight-ton behemoth, dubbed Super Croc, once dominated the waters of North Africa. But this proto-croc was unable to survive the great extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. One reason was its size and its inability to hunt on land as food resources dwindled in the oceans. But other more versatile crocs that could dominate both land and water did survive. They endured and became the modern crocs we know today. This skull is a hundred million years old. It's one of the rarest and most important fossils in the world. This was probably the planet's very first modern species of crocodile. In the mid-1990s, a farmer in the outback of Queensland, Australia, stumbled across a strange rock. For Dr. Steve Salisbury, it was the find of a lifetime a fossil paleontologists have been seeking for over a century. I knew that we nailed it and had found the animal that everyone had been looking for for 130 years. Isis Fortia duncani marks an evolutionary turning point between ancient and modern crocs. Although barely three feet long, Isis Fortia was the first crocodilian with critical design features like jaws strong enough to withstand a death roll, and an internal nostril, allowing it to breathe while almost completely submerged. But some of Isis Fortia's greatest evolutionary breakthroughs probably weren't preserved in any fossil record. Deep inside the salty, three highly engineered organs have given it total mastery of its aquatic environment for over 100 million years. One of the animal's two lungs. The salty's unusually large lungs are a sophisticated buoyancy control system. 
the salty's liver can actually move inside its body to shift its center of gravity in the water. No other reptile has this ability. So instead of laying flat on the water surface, they can move their liver backwards and literally change their center of gravity so that the tail sinks down. But now, the dissection reaches one of biology's greatest mysteries. Put simply, this heart just shouldn't be in a reptile. Every other reptile in existence has a simple three-chambered heart, but not the crocodile. Its heart has four chambers, just like a human's. When prey enters the water, the waiting croc shifts into attack mode. Crocodiles can use their advanced hearts to actually control their blood flow, sending oxygenated blood exactly where it's needed most. In the crocodile's heart, a valve radically redirects the blood flow through its body. All available oxygenated blood is pumped to its tail and jaws. The croc hits its prey with its propulsion and bite force at maximum power. The crocodile is more finely adapted to life on Earth than perhaps even humans. It's got power, control, and intelligence. And deep inside its anatomy, a secret weapon that allows the croc to eat almost anything. Crocodilians are the ultimate opportunistic predator. They'll take down a fully grown wildebeest, smash the shell of a massive turtle, Its prey is taken by complete surprise. And once it's heading toward the salty stomach, very little will remain in any recognizable form. The pH of the stomach can actually get almost to one, which is absolutely incredible, because that's almost concentrated hydrochloric acid. The acid in this flask is the same pH as that found in a salty stomach strong enough to dissolve metal. Although in nature, the process can take weeks, not seconds. It's not just the acid. The croc's digestive system is also a grinding machine. Inside every salty stomach are stones. There are dozens and dozens of stones in here. They're called gastroliths, rocks eaten by the salty to pulverize and grind prey. In the biggest crocs, they can be as large as a fist and weigh over five pounds. Few things survive the combination of acid and stone. And crocodiles only need to eat once every few weeks. When food is scarce, salties can enter a state of almost suspended animation and survive up to a year without a single meal. That's because they're cold-blooded Cold-blooded creatures use the warmth around them, chiefly the sun, to help maintain their body temperature. Warm-blooded creatures like humans create their own body heat by burning energy, but they need a much higher food intake to provide that energy. Being cold-blooded has the great advantage of needing far less food. Faced with a total lack of sustenance, a human would perish long before a crocodile. It's a major reason why crocs have survived for a hundred million years. But the advantage of being cold-blooded only holds if you can regulate your body temperature using nothing but external sources of heat, such as the sun. And when it comes to being solar-powered, crocs have proven they're better at it than perhaps any other cold-blooded creature. They've evolved a remarkably efficient thermal control system 
Running just below the surface of the salty's back are a series of bony plates called osteoderms. They're nature's solar panels, radiating the sun's heat through the croc's body. Adam Britton is about to put the Salty's thermal control system to the test at a commercial crocodile farm in Darwin. Um, okay. This temperature measuring device, called a data logger, is sewn inside a piece of yeah, meat. It it's specially designed to withstand the toughest environments, even the acid in a Salty's stomach. The plan is to measure the Salty's internal temperature versus the outside temperature. Okay, how's that? If the croc's thermoregulation system is really working, it'll maintain a constant body temperature regardless of the outside air temperature. Okay, Ruben. The meat has to be small enough to be swallowed in so one gulp. Want... If the salty bites into the data logger and crushes it, this experiment will be over before it starts. But first, they'll have to get it to take the bait. And the salty's gone under. Here he comes. He's directly under this now. He's coming up slowly. Alright, he's ready. He's coming up slowly. Get ready. Get ready. Now. It looks like a clean bite. If the data logger's still intact, it's on its way to the salty stomach, where it will take temperature readings for the next 10 right days. Excellent, Ruben. This second data logger will measure the outside air temperature. Comparing the two data loggers will prove whether the salty really can keep its body temperature constant and even. Ten days later. If the data loggers survive, there's only one way to get it out, the same way it went in. They noose the salty, and it's not happy. Adam injects a powerful muscle relaxant. Once the drugs take an effect, the jaws are tied back. Adam covers his arm with oil to help it slide down the salty's throat. This should slip down very easily. The main thing is if, if my arm is long enough to reach her stomach, which I'm hoping it is. His team tries to manipulate the salty stomach into a better position. Find it yet? There's just a few things in here I'm gonna pull out. There's a problem. The data logger's wedged at the back of the stomach. If Adam can't reach it, there's no other way of getting it out. Finally, an hour later, Adam grasps the data logger. It's undamaged by over a week and a half in one of the most toxic digestive systems on Earth. So all we need to do now is go and download the data from this logger and from the one that was in the air, and we should be able to compare them. Once downloaded, the data confirms the crocodile's incredible ability to thermoregulate. For 10 days, despite dramatic changes in the outside air temperature, the salty's internal temperature remains constant to within a single degree. So it means it gets the advantages of being cold-blooded, which means that it doesn't waste energy. It, it's, a, it's an energy conserver. This kind of thing is critical to the crocodile's success. 
It's a heat transport system as efficient as anything designed by humans. And the blood coursing through the crocodile's body has its own unique qualities. This ancient species may hold the key to battling some of humankind's worst diseases. Crocodiles live in some of the world's most foul, bacteria-infested habitats, and they're intensely territorial. Deep battle scars, even entire limbs being torn off, are not uncommon. But even when they're badly injured, crocs usually heal without infection. Within their blood, crocodilians have one of the most powerful immune systems in nature, an internal antibiotic defense built up over millions of years. And the secret to that crocodilian immune system may lie here in the swamplands around Beaumont, Texas. This is airboat country the best and sometimes only way of navigating the territory of the saltwater crocodile's fearsome cousin, the American alligator. Biochemist Dr. Mark Merchant has been catching alligators all his adult life. These animals have, uh, are very aggressive toward members of their own species and they fight and they tear limbs off of each other. These very serious wounds, including and loss of entire limbs, will heal almost totally without any type of infection. Could crocodilian blood help fight human infections and diseases? Mark's about to use this gator blood and blood from Australian saltwater crocodiles in an extraordinary experiment. He'll pit the serum from this blood against a bacteria called methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. The Infectious Diseases Society of America calls it one of the gravest bacterial threats to our health. Staphylococcus is a superbug that causes serious skin infections in humans, and this strain is resistant to most antibiotics. Mark places a drop of salty serum into the center of a Staphylococcus culture. Beside it, a drop of alligator serum. On the Petri dish begins a tense 12-hour battle. Will the blood that protects crocs and alligators against the worst infections in their world survive against this superbug that menaces humans? 12 hours later, These circles show where the croc and gator blood have resisted infection. It's an incredible result. And you can see where the bacteria was growing around the outside of the plate and where the alligator and crocodile serum diffused into the media, it created this growth inhibition zone where it killed the bacteria. In the space of just 12 hours, the crocodilian's ancient immune system has defeated bacteria that didn't even exist 50 years ago. Bacteria that humans have no defense against, but which croc blood seems to handle with ease. This is only one type of bacteria. I mean, it, we, we've looked at a broad spectrum of bacteria and, and also uh, viruses and things, and uh, these results are very exciting to us. Coursing through the veins of every crocodilian could be the basis for new and powerful antibiotic medicines to help fight many of the diseases we face or may come to face. By protecting the crocodile, we could end up protecting ourselves. Bioengineered to stand the test of time, the crocodile has triumphed. But of all its attributes, perhaps the single greatest reason for its success is its world-class jaws. January 8, 2007. 
Off-duty policeman Jeff Tanswell is snorkeling near a remote island off the northern tip of Australia. Jeff's wife Jane is in a boat nearby. Neither of them are aware they're being watched. Suddenly, the water around Jeff explodes. It hit me that hard, I didn't possibly think it could have been an animal. He's been ambushed by a 15-foot saltwater crocodile. Jane sees it all from the boat. I see this thing rolling off him, his head, his chest, his right front arm, and he rolls off him like as if to go into a roll. Frantically, Jeff lashes out as he's dragged under. I started kicking and shoving and just trying to work out what the hell was going on. And then the pressure come off. Incredibly, the salty releases Jeff. And I'm waving and screaming at Jane in the boat. I was thinking, my God, don't let me survive the first hit to get eaten on the second. I'm going to get eaten. Jane drags her husband into the safety of the boat. Why did the Salty let him go? The bite that erupted through the water at Jeff Tanswell would not be possible without a unique feature of the crocodile's jaws. Past the Salty's 66 giant teeth is a bizarre flap of muscle called the palatal valve. It's a muscular extension of the tongue. When the jaws are open, the palatal valve seals off the croc's windpipe. Without the palatal valve, crocodiles would drown taking prey in the water or dragging prey under the water. But this palatal valve may have been the key to Jeff Tanswell's amazing escape. Just before the Salty attacked, it opened its jaws and its palatal valve sealed off its throat. Striking out in a frenzy, Jeff thrust his arm into the Salty's mouth. In doing so, he may have unwittingly saved himself. It's possible that he dislodged the croc's palatal valve, forcing water into its throat and threatening to drown it. In the wild, few prey are as lucky as Jeff Tanswell. When a salty seizes prey in its jaws, it clamps down with a bite force of up to two tons of pressure per square inch. Its jaw muscles are so powerful that they cannot be contained in the skull. In order to close the jaws fast, you've got to have muscles, and you've got to have a lot of muscles. These are the caudal pterygoid muscles. And when all of these muscles work together in concert, they can generate a phenomenal force. That force puts incredible strain on a salty's jaws. In fact, with every bite, the bioengineering of a croc's skull comes close to its structural limits. The most advanced technology is being used to discover why modern crocodiles have survived for over a hundred million years. The CAT scan lab of the Mater Hospital in Newcastle, Australia. The head of a salty taken out of Darwin Harbor is about to be scanned. Newcastle University scientist Colin McHenry is an expert in biomechanics, the machinery of living organisms. He's investigating a central mystery of the crocodile's design, how its slender skull withstands the forces of its massive bite. The eight muscle pairs in a crocodile's jaw create enough force to theoretically damage its skull. But they don't. How is this possible? Collins investigating a remarkable theory about the mechanics of a crocodile's bite. 
he'll create a highly accurate engineering model of a salty skull based on this CAT scan data. But he'll also need precise measurements of the bite forces generated by live crocodiles. For this, he turns to Dr. Adam Britton, who's constructed a device made of a length of high-pressure hose filled with oil. And the idea is the crocodile will bite down on this and it'll put pressure on the oil and then this gauge will tell us what the maximum force is that the crocodile applies. Adam has to provoke the salties to get the maximum possible bite force reading. That last guy, he gave us 2,690 pounds, which is just phenomenal. And also, he may not have bitten as hard as, he, as hard as he was possibly capable of doing, but that was a pretty impressive bite. Over two and a half thousand pounds per square inch. That's enough force to crush an animal's skull like a foam cup. A hundred million year old design being put to a 21st century test. Colin feeds the bite force measurements into his engineering model. This is a unique glimpse into the biomechanical structure of the salty skull and a possible answer to the mystery of its bite. The theory Colin's investigating is that perhaps not all of the croc's eight muscle pairs are working to produce sheer bite force. Early results from his computer-generated model seem to support that theory. Not all the muscle force goes into the actual bite. At least two pairs of muscles seem to be working to redirect forces in the skull, preventing any structural damage. This sophisticated counterbalance of forces is one way the crocodile skull can be both slender and strong. A full-grown crocodile's power is virtually unrivaled. But they start out with only an eggshell protecting them from the outside world. Fragile, delicate. For millennia, this is how crocodilian life has begun. Inside each egg, a baby crocodile is stirring. It must struggle to break free. Every push leaves it exhausted. A new generation enters the world. For millions of years, this species has endured. But its future may soon become uncertain. Some scientists believe global warming will have a catastrophic effect on crocodile populations because the temperature of the nest determines the gender of baby crocs. The fear is that higher global temperatures might produce an overload of females and too few males. Could it be the croc's fatal flaw? Or will their biology continue to be as future-proof as it's been for a hundred million years? For now, these creatures remain unchallenged as the dominant reptilian predator. Armed for survival, these tiny three-inch long crocs cry for their mother from within the nest. The hatchlings are trapped inside. The mother must dig them out. Mother and offspring come together for the first and only time in their lives. In a surprising show of maternal behavior, 
the massive salty gently takes her hatchlings in her jaws and releases them in the water. Only about 10% of salties survive the first year of life. But at least these hatchlings have got an evolutionary head start on most of their competition. A body design so advanced that even a few minutes old, this baby croc can take care of itself. After all, few creatures on our planet have endured for so long, so unchanged. They've survived countless ice ages and climatic catastrophes. This ancient predator may even turn out to be more future-proof than man.